to read out again from this particular rejection motion. I am conscious of the fact that this notice of motion makes a number of statements against the highest judicial authority in the country. I have weighed the evidence produced in the notice to assess if there is adequate, cogent, coherent evidence to proceed further. On a careful right. analysis and reflection, I find there is virtually no concrete verifiable imputation. Either mm -hmm. the allegations are within judicial domain or concern the internal judicial processes or there are unsubstantiated surmises and conjectures which hardly merit or necessitate further investigation. Now right. we're told that the Congress party is going to be holding a press briefing shortly so we'll see how they really re react mm -hmm. to this particular mm -hmm. rejection. Right, because, uh, you know, Aarti, we have been tracking this story very closely and we know that eminent jurists who have spoken to us, including Fali S. Nariman, has called it a black day, the day the impeachment motion decision was taken. And now, I believe in this order, another observation has been made. The fact that this impeachment motion was made public even before uh, the chairman of the Rajya Sabha could take a decision on it. You know, the vice president has mentioned in this order that he has consulted a number of legal experts, jurists, mm. and eminent people in the field of the judiciary to really come to this conclusion. And it is on the basis of consultations and consensus within that fraternity that he has arrived at this conclusion. Of course, given that the charges were against the Chief Justice of India, he couldn't obviously consult the Chief Justice himself. Mm. But there appears to be general consensus, as this indicates, within the legal fraternity that these charges were really untenable. Right. Uh, at the same time, Arti, there has been so much discussion on why this was politically motivated and why this is a manifestation of the standoff between political parties which has taken, uh, you know, this kind of a shape. Of course, that is the allegation and we had a lot of eminent jurists tell us that when we broke the story on Friday that this is politically motivated. I must mention, of course, here that this particular order copy has no mention of hmm. the politics hmm. of it. It right. does seem to indicate, though, that it does say, though, that this is a, an internal matter of the judiciary, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really say anything about political color, political motivations or anything hmm. of that sort. Right. Uh, within the Congress also, Aarti, uh, there has been dissent over this matter, isn't it? We didn't have uh, Manmohan Singh, who was a member of the Rajya Sabha, signing the petition, even though they did manage to get uh, the numbers well above 50 signatures. Uh, that also speaks a lot about how some uh, important minds and luminaries of this country were not in favor of it across party lines. Yes, there doesn't appear to be an overall consensus within the Congress party itself. If you see, like you mentioned, Manmohan Singh didn't sign the petition. Salman mm. Khurshi, the former law minister, came out and said mm. he wasn't in favor of this. So even within the Congress, there appears to be uncertainty on whether or not this impeachment motion really should have been moved in the first place. Right. Arti, of course, uh, thanks for uh, giving us the entire breakdown. And if I may just also summarize the grounds and if you could take us through those very important points from that order copy that we have uh, accessed, Arti rejection is that there is no proof all of this are unsubstantiated allegations and proven misbehavior which is the grounds for removal really hasn't been substantiated it's the charges are neither tenable nor mm. legally admissible right uh, all this while uh, RT if I'm not mistaken there was this general impression that the charges that be that are being talked about does not have very strong convincing grounds it is somewhere along the lines of may have been or appears to have do you think that that is the reason why none of these grounds are tenable or admissible yes in fact this even mentions that the same certainty does not constitute, and I'm quoting here, proof beyond reasonable doubt which is required to make out a case of proven misbehavior. Conversations between third parties with dubious credentials which have been extensively relied upon cannot themselves constitute any material evidence against the holder of the office of the Chief Justice. Remember, this particular um, charge refers to the Prasad Education Trust case where co phone conversations were relied on by members of the Congress party right. to make a case against the CGI. Mm -hmm. That particular mm -hmm. charge here has been nullified according to this rejection. Arti, thanks so much for joining us with all the latest information. We have more breaking news coming in.